Keith 2 has always had long classes. Ever since release, that's one of few things that stay consistent. Throughout the years, we've had new maps, new weapons, new hats and new game modes, but never that sacred 10 class. So when Valve added the charge and charge to TF2, I don't think anyone acknowledged how much it would change the game. You see, unlike most people, I see Demo Knight as its own separate class. It changes nearly everything about Demo. Looking at the gameplay, it's incomparable. One side focuses on area denial and knocking down chokes, while the other is completely movement oriented, focusing on being a sneaky little assassin. Of course, a whole new class needs a few of its own weapons. In this case, Demo Knight does not disappoint, with all the choices for swords and shields and a ton of potential combos. For shields, we got three options, with all of them filling their own niche, mobility, recharge, or tankiness. First, I'm going to look at the splendid screen, the middle of the line between mobility and strength. It's a baseline shield, and part of what I call the default Demo Knight loadout. This one is best used with the assassin place I mentioned earlier, cutting in and instantly dropping the enemy. This really works in soldier, even though you won't actually kill them, the poo poo diaper brain soldier will shoot you anyways and kill himself. Splendid screen seems to be the shield of preference for most good demo knights, and honestly, I can see why. Demo is at his most threatening when he's charging at you, so the more often you can do that, the better. The constant back and forth between charging and retreating is thrilling, but if you don't want to think about aggression as much and would rather be a tanky boy, we still got an option for you. Meet the charge and charge. 50% fire resistance and 30% explosive resistance. This really helps against Demo Knight's main counter and overall makes you much more sustainable. Although this is the original Demo Shield, it's objectively the worst. Demo needs to be close to his enemies to deal damage, so being able to survive more damage won't help if you can't get into fights in the first place. Maybe though, you'd rather have mobility, you'd like to fly around the map, and you'd like to start tramping. That's when you use the tie turner. Undoubtedly my favourite shield, and not because it's the best, I'll be honest it's not, but because it opens up a whole new form of movement. Trimping is by far the best part of playing demo man. Sure with sticky jumping you can be a little more mobile, getting to the objective quicker, but trimping by your sight, you become a whole different type of threat. No one can look at gameplay like this and not be completely entranced. I mean come on, it looks so cool. It's also a great getaway plan. In this clip, I'm getting rushed down by a scout, but thanks to my tripping skills, I'm able to make a clean getaway. Seriously though, having a full charge available for getaway really helps your sustainability, but as you might have guessed, stuff like this is very hard to do. The amount of skill it takes to pull off the fabled upward rollout is huge. One of the few people ever do is Solar Light, a legend in TF2 community, and undoubtedly the most popular demo night player out there. With what I've been saying, you might think the tramping requires a ton of skill, but there are simple jumps you can do on nearly any map in the game. If you're just starting out, small maps like Harvest are great training grounds. I just can't stress how cool tramping is once you get past the initial learning curve. Adding tramping to your demo skill set is really what makes you transform from a shitty first time demo to a force of nature. Still, there are many other things that lead to this change. The main one is your choice of sword. Then what swords of three main groups. Passive, Refill, and Multi Islander. So let's start with my favourite type of sword. Refill weapons in general are just so fun to play with. Chain together kills for a huge streak is amazing, and just a general feeling of immortality. So pair that feeling with Demonite and you get the Half Sadoichi. Using the Half Sadoichi, you can take on those big groups of enemies Demonite usually is to shy away from and go on a huge kill streak. What if instead of tankiness, you want to be more mobile? Well if that's so, try out the Persian Persuader, fly around the whole map with near constantly full charge, live out your pirate fantasies, and say goodbye to all of your guns. We got 5 ammo, what? Tri I used the funny pirate sword a lot when I was still learning how to trim, just cause with the tie turner, you have a really fast recharge. So if this sword is near instant charge refill, using the Johnny Depp cosplay, and works well with most shields, every demo I would use it, right? And well you'd be correct, if it wasn't for the existence of another sword. The Islander is my favourite weapon in TF2, hands down. The serotonin surge will sweep through the entire team, melting one person after another. You feel immortal. At your peak, you have more health than a soldier, 
more speed to the scout, and a cool green eye. I'm not amazing at the video game, like, I'm not a loop level gamer, but I've totally dominated service with the Islander. Once you get the ball rolling, there's nothing the other team can do. So how do you get the ball rolling? Well, as a demo knight, snipers are going to be your main target. They're super weak at close range and have to stay away from their team to be useful, leaving them all alone for you. Anyone with two functioning eyes might have noticed that I've been playing Harvest in most of these clips. That's because not only does it have a ton of good trim spots, but the crazy sight lines make it perfect for snipers too. Dumb little kiwis are so predictable that you'll only ever find them in one of three places, all of which can be reached from this shrimp right outside spawn. This is when it really becomes necessary to learn shrimping. In large open maps, you need that extra bit of mobility. So Harvest is a good map for Demonite. What else? Well the other main option for a Demonite map is Upward. The long strips and trim spots make it perfect for regular Demonite playstyle. Charging in, picking off one sniper and quickly getting away. Throughout this video, I've painted Demonite as unstoppable. But what are his counters? Well... Melee crits have to be the biggest counter in Demonite, and of course Demo's main target is the class that seems to get them the most. It's stupid they even have to be careful in 1v1 versus Sniper, because we both know he could randomly delete me. Now we know that crits counter Demonite, but what about actual counters though, like classes? Well that's where Engineer comes in. If you see an NG guard in a point, just give up. There is some ways you can get around this, but come on. A few minutes ago I was telling you what trimping was. We aren't doing all that. So how do you counter NG? Yeah. The answer, well, use a gun. The demo knight who uses a gun is called the hybrid knight, and he is even more scary than the regular one. Equipping the grenade launcher covers up most of demo knight's shortcomings, along with making you much stronger in general. Some people seem to say, oh if you have a gun then it isn't even demo knight. Well, they aren't wrong. When I started using the grenade launcher again, I kind of forgot they even had a sword to fall back onto. That's why I feel the best hybrid loadout is using a tight turner with the claymore. It combines the huge damage to the abilities of grenade launcher with the amazing mobility of the tight turner. But what about the claymore? Why should you use that? Well, you notice how in all of these trumping clips I've sewn so far, they've been using it? Well, that's because the claymore is one stat that makes it perfect for trumping. A 0.5 second increase in charge duration makes way more of a difference than you might think. And something you might have noticed with the Claymore is that its only downside only applies when you have a sword out, making it perfect for hybrid knight. You can go far with the tide turner, but now you can go anywhere. Even though it's a really fun way to play, a more sensible player would walk into a fight, use the charge and escape whenever it becomes necessary. A little trick I started using on light classes is charging straight at them. And then when your shield hits, instantly shoot a pipe. A little combo that makes you even more of a threat to snipers. If you can actually hit your pipes, then this is the best place out for you. Now, in this clip, I'm absolutely popping off. But you might wonder why I suddenly stop. Well, my controller disconnected. I'm going to guess that most of you haven't used a remote with TF2 before. And by a small chance you ever did, it was probably a little joke with your friends. It's basically shunned to ever plug in your Xbox remote. But this was before Solarline made his video about using controller. And well, it changed my entire perspective. I used to be a big Fortnite gamer. So when I first got my PC, I was so used to playing remote that I kept using my controller. Eventually picking up this dumb looking Xbox remote. And today, it's finally being used again. TF2 on controller is really hard to pick up. Especially because it's been years since I've ever used a remote. Even with all this, Controller TF2 is some of the most fun I've had playing in months. <laughs> Every kill is so much harder to get and feels so much more rewarding. If you're up for the challenge, I really recommend plugging in your controller again. Although I started off really bad, everything started picking up after a while. It's actually surprisingly easy to hit pipes from a distance. But when you start getting to close range, it gets really hard. If you for some reason want to buy a remote to play TF2, I can't recommend anything other than a PS5 remote. And that's because of something called Gyro. I'm not the one to explain this, but it really helps with your close range aiming. But even without a good controller, you can have a lot of fun. I even top scored a couple of games I played. You can do okay with the controller, but so much of your gameplay still depends on your loadout. So what loadouts do you actually use? 
but all depends on how you want to play the game. Of course you can go with regular pub stomper demo night with the eye lantern and splendid screen, but come on, you're watching my channel. We aren't going to take the easy route. So if you want to mess around a little more, experiment a little, what are you going to do? Well let's say you figured out the basics of trumping. In that case, a great loadout to use would be the tide turner with the half Zadoichi. Boys together, you can get into the fight, get one kill, and use your full health and full charge to easily escape. Rinse and repeat, and you quickly at the top score. But that's too easy. What if you want to challenge yourself? Well then, it's time for the caper. You probably haven't used this one in a while, and that's for good reason. I really forgot how bad the hula pool caper was. Your only hope of ever getting any kills is with the explosion, but how can you do that if you only get one explosion per life? The weapon is counterintuitive by design, so how do you get around this? Well, a little trick the community somehow discovered. Crouching during the first hit lets you instantly kill light classes. Don't ask me how anyone found this out or why it's a thing, but look, it is what it is. The only way you can make the caber semi-viable is by playing around spawn and running back straight for the respawn every time you get a kill. You might be hearing this thinking, this is so stupid, why would anyone put that much effort in? But the payback for all your hard work is completely worth it. I found myself giggling like a goddamn joker every time I got a kill. <laughs> Using the caper, all shields are viable. Or, well, as viable as any loadout with the caper can be. So all in all, the choice comes down to three separate play styles. Stock Demo Knight, Sushi Chef, or Hybrid Knight. That's all I got for now. If you want to see more of the bad weapons and how I like to use them, check out this video. Or maybe you want to see some new weapons for demo in other classes. If so, check out this one. Good luck.